glasses. And I've called it, somebody suggested it, we called it Carpe Diem, an ode to our Myanmar Odyssey by Judith and John Mackay. And with apologies to William Topaz McGonagall, who's Scott Coyne's worst ever poet. <laughs> the Chinese Year of the Tiger, 2011 is the date. Leo organized a two-week trip to Myanmar, which I'll relate. In Yangon, we did gather an intrepid group of ten, with Leo, our great leader, three women and seven men. Two weeks transversing Myanmar from east across to west to cities, towns and villages, Leo Luin's planning was the best. Fine traders hotel at start and end, in the ancient and modern thereafter, Kanda Craig and Nobel and Vasali, plus Nepali seaside Amata. Marooned by police and army blocks, not the most comfortable of nights, we stayed in a house of ill repute, with a condom box but no lights. <laughs> Lewin took us to far villages, to temples mile on mile, to the governor's house and the English house, and to wrestling, Rakhine style. Botanical gardens developed by Q, bronze pouring in a hot kiln, beating gold, stone sculptures, weaving silk. We used up lots of film. Our transportation varied from buffalo cart to rattling bus. From boat to horse-drawn carriages, we accepted with no fuss. We bounced over mountain passes and powered up rivers in a boat, waving to children on the shore. As past them, we did float. We gave out balloons and pencils and walls charts to the schools. We thought a lot about tourism and discussed good ethics and rules. Sometimes warm, but mostly cold, and now and then did pour. The toilets too did vary, from either behind the bush or door. Hot water a rare commodity, and never in the morning. The electricity was capricious too, and went off with no warning. Now here's the rhyming challenge. Roger gave the Kaiser challenge to rhyme cannibalism and appendicitis. The best that we could manage is... Rabbinism, that's cannibalism, <laughs> Rabbinism and poetryitis. <laughs> Our men struggled to tie their long jeans in stylish red and brown. The wind gave his expert advice to stop them dropping down. The food was good quality everywhere, of many new styles to me, from tamarind sweets and the veggie guar to Kitty's Myanmar tea. First on the bus were Kitty and Graham, always early as a lark, last often were Aggie and Alan, and with jo Judith frozen in contrast to Mark. Kitty and Graham spent the most for their three girls back home. Roger had wise thoughts on many things, while the Mackays were a medical toad. Julian with his cannon to shoot girls was very keen. His ha-ha-ha echoed the hills everywhere we've been. <laughs> Manu, Alan and Aggie made a splendid pair. Mark's thin attire astounded. Between the various members of the group, goodwill, good cheer abounded. We ended the tour reluctantly as to the seaside we did come, promising to send Lee our photos and meet at his favourite dim sum. So thanks to all who made it so, may adventuring never cease, and to our future's many years of health and joy and peace. <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, my girls will appreciate that. Oh, very good, very good. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Lovely.